Is this too much? It, it's too much, isn't it? Hi, welcome to Can of Spader Christmas. In this episode, I want to cover a battery management system or BMS. Now, BMS also stands for battery monitoring system, so I'll explain the difference. When you have multiple cells in series to, to make a battery, they can charge and discharge at different rates. Anybody in the radio controlled hobby knows this. You've got these LiPo packs with a main connector and a set of balance leads. The charger dumps all the power into the main connector and then the balance leads bleed off some of the energy. If you've got, you know, one or more cells in here that are that are getting a little bit higher, it'll bleed off some of that energy through the balance leads. That way, the, all the cells get to reach the same fully charged state. In a power wall, the problem's potentially worse because not only are we using used cells, but may have multiple chargers connected up to the same battery. You may have one powered by utility or generator power, one for solar, one for wind, one for hydro, one for your stationary bicycle. All of those contribute to keeping the battery charged. Average Joe recently did a safety video and in one part mentioned how a pack with multiple cells caught fire because one of the cells went to zero volts, essentially removing itself from the pack and the charger or chargers were set to maintain a certain voltage. So, you know, you've got seven cells in a pack, for example, uh, one of them goes to zero volts. Uh, the chargers are set to maintain the voltage for those seven cells. Now that you've removed one, the chargers think, oh, well, these batteries are low. Let me charge them back up. So the other six packs get overcharged. So we need a way to monitor not only the voltage of the entire battery, but we also need to look at the individual cells or cell packs to make sure that all the packs get fully charged, but not overcharged. The manual way to do this would be to charge each cell pack individually. That really isn't practical, so it's common practice to add a BMS to the battery to kind of keep an eye on things for us. A BMS can monitor each cell pack to keep track of the voltage, and that's what a battery monitoring system does. The other side of monitoring is alerting. If one of the cell packs started getting too high during a charge or too low during a discharge, a battery monitoring system might be able to alert you. Hey, we've got a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever the problem is that caused the alert in the first place is still a problem so a battery monitoring system doesn't prevent a catastrophic failure on its own. A battery management system on the other hand can take some automated action uh, based on what's going on. It's kind of like cruise control for your battery. Different BMSs do different things, so it's important to pick one that can manage your battery for your application. A popular BMS for power walls is the one from Batrium out of Australia. Back in 2011, the folks at Batrium were designing and building a BMS for a new startup with the goal of producing low volume roadsters. Arc speed ceased operations before the project was completed, so they installed the BMS in a friend's EV conversion to see how it would perform in a real-world application. Shortly after the first system was running, the Batrium team was approached by several in the Australian EV conversion community who were eager to purchase a system of their own. Soon after, the team was hired to build a custom BMS for an autonomous robot. Bottom line, a well-built, high-quality BMS was starting to gain popularity for all sorts of applications. 
Jaron Ware got all this started and is an avid motor racing fan. Sorry ladies, he's taken. In 2014, Batrium jumped at the chance to help an electric vehicle compete in and win a super sports championship against other petrol-powered radicals. For those of you in the U.S., petrol is gasoline. The Batrium BMS has gone through a few iterations and it is still evolving. They are currently developing new products to complement the Longmon that was designed and built in 2012 but still in production today. Jaren's goal is to equip the system as an Internet of Things device to allow remote access of the BMS from anywhere in the world. Well, as long as you have Internet access. The current system I have has a central brain that talks to individual cell monitors that monitor voltage and temperature and they can burn off excess energy if the cell or cell pack goes above a certain level. So the BMS will help keep it balanced. I still recommend using a shunt trip or contactor. I set up a small system here just so I could get familiar with how everything works. I have seven cells in series to make 24 volts, a small load consisting of a string of 24 volt dumb RGB LEDs controlled by an Arduino. Now why that load? The dumb RGB LEDs means that the entire string of LEDs has the same color. An analog signal controls the brightness and color of the entire string. Digital pixels, on the other hand, use serial data to control the brightness and color of each individual node or bulb in a string. And it's what most people are using these days to do animated lighting. So smart pixels are cool, but they have a narrow range of voltages they like, so 24 volt smart pixels like 24 volts, not 25 volts. Um, this battery can get up to almost 29 volts, so I went with the analog version of these lights, but I still have fairly precise control over the actual load I put on the system. These are called long mons. They're included in a larger group of cell mons or cell monitors. Now, Batrium has several different cell monitors. I'm using the long mons for my power wall. Now, they have a couple of LEDs that flash a lot, so you probably want to be able to see them. They also have a couple of temperature sensors in them to monitor the temperature in the cell pack and to monitor the temperature of the resistors. And most of the Longmon is a set of resistors used to burn off excess energy to help keep the battery balanced. So what does all this mean? All right, in my case, I've got seven cells that I have hooked up to this BMS. The BMS knows the voltage of each and every cell. Now, if I had the long mons attached to each cell, they could also monitor the temperature of each cell. It didn't seem practical for this demo, but for baby pack one, I will attach one long mon to each of the seven 80 cell packs. Now they have a couple of cautions while you're hooking all this up. Uh, do any cable prep prior to plugging them into the cell mons. And when you're connecting everything up for the first time, Use only the USB connector into the Watchmon. Run through the network test. And the device sync utilities before connecting anything else up just to make sure everything's communicating properly. So the Batrium checks in with each long mon several times a second, essentially constantly monitoring the voltage and temperature. And since I'm using lithium cobalt oxide cells, if the cell pack goes higher than 4.1 volts, essentially fully charged, the system starts diverting energy through the resistors in the long mon to burn off excess energy, and the long mon starts to heat up a little bit. Now, when I first went to connect all this up, I thought I did something wrong because the Longmon started heating up immediately. Uh, turns out the cells that I had were just charged up past 4.1 volts and the Longmons were trying to bleed off some of the excess energy to bring it back down to 4.1. Kind of freaked me out a little bit. As I said before, the Longmons themselves have a finite amount of energy that they can burn off. So for one cell, 
it can bring them down pretty quickly. Uh, for 80 cells, it's going to take longer. For 320 cells, it's going to take even longer. Um, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and just contact Batrium to find out what you need for your particular system. This is called a supervisor. Now this particular supervisor is a Watchmon 4. The supervisor talks to the Cellmons and a shunt if you have one and can even control a smart charger using the CAN bus protocol. There are also some contact inputs and outputs and you can get an expansion card with relays and other I.O. if you need it. One of the outputs on this Watchmon can be connected to a contactor or shunt trip. Now the shunt trip will flip a circuit breaker off to basically yank the battery out of the circuit. This is an additional item that needs to be added to the system. It's not part of the BMS itself. Let me demonstrate. The shunt trip is on the left, the two breakers are on the right, and then you can see up top there the LEDs are on, and I can turn them on real quick and show that we have green. All right, so I'm going to go here to control logic, and I'm going to change this to right now we are at 3.7 so I'm gonna change it to I don't know 2.6 excuse me 3.69 and hit enter and save it so now uh, I will turn the lights back on and we've gone down to 3.69 but we're okay so I'll turn up the intensity a little bit and that should actually that should get us to the point where it's pulling it down far enough maybe go a little brighter there we go so we should get a critical alert there it is Another feature of this BMS is the ability to control a fan. Uh, anytime a long mon goes into balancing, the resistors turn on, cooling mode is enabled. Uh, so if you have a fan connected to the output of the BMS, it'll try to keep the long mon and or batteries cool depending on where you have it pointed. I have a 24 volt fan connected to the output of the watchmon. So anytime a long mon goes into balancing, uh, after about a 30 second delay, the fan turns on. By default, the fan turns on for 60 seconds. Now, if the Longmon stays in balancing, the fan stays on. Once the fan goes off, it'll stay off for at least 30 seconds. In my demo here, the fan is connected directly to the battery, so a cell can go into balancing, but when the fan kicks on, it pulls the voltage back down below the balancing threshold, so it goes off again. And when it goes off, the cell goes back into balancing, so the fan turns back on after the delay. Now, it might seem a little annoying, but this actually demonstrates how this part of the BMS works. For this demo, I don't have the shunt connected. The shunt lets the system keep track of the state of charge of the overall battery. It goes between the battery and everything else. So the Batrium BMS is a solid system for monitoring the state of your battery and with a few additional components, it can help manage the battery too. While you can find less expensive BMSs on the market, I don't think you'll find one with the same features and build quality as the Batrium. This is not a sponsored video, it's just my opinion based on what I know now. Now depending on your needs and computer skills, uh, there is one really neat feature of the Batrium BMS. The Watchmon has a Wi-Fi interface that can broadcast the data monitored over UDP. Now why is that important? There's a project on GitHub authored by Daniel Romer uh, with input from Jaron called Watchmon UDP Listener. Uh, it's a node application that listens for and decodes these UDP packets. It can send the data to an MQTT server or an InfluxDB. Now, InfluxDB is an open source time series database, which is good for 
graphing sensor data over a large period of time. Daniel has a video about running all this on a Raspberry Pi, so check it out if it's something that you're interested in. I was more interested in using the MQTT feature so I could monitor and alert from my home assistant home automation system. Now here's how I have everything connected. I already had a lot of this in place for home assistant so it was fairly easy for me to plug in the Batrium data into the system. The stuff in green was already in place for home assistant. Um, I just added this second instance of MQTT so I could rate limit the number of messages hitting Home Assistant. Uh, the WatchBond sends a ton of information and I didn't really need it to be that accurate. One update per second is adequate for my needs so I could probably rate limit it even further if I need to. So what do I get with all this mess? First, I can see the battery status on a Home Assistant card I created. Uh, it'll show the state of charge once I connect the shunt. Um, it shows the overall battery voltage and the min and max cell pack voltage and temperature. Now, even though the Batrium transmits the temperatures in Celsius, my home assistant is configured in Fahrenheit, so it converts the temps automatically. Uh, there are some other parameters I've added, and all this can be adjusted as needed. The other neat thing about this is that if I get a critical alert on the WatchBond, I can have Home Assistant send an alert to my phone. Now, I can't reset the breaker remotely if it trips, but at least I'll know something needs my attention. And I'm sure things will change here a little as I actually, you know, connect the system up and start using it. Now, I have a computer background and I've been running Home Assistant for over a year. So if you're starting from scratch with this, it's going to test your patience. Now, I recommend starting with Home Assistant. Uh, just get familiar with that. Maybe run it on a Raspberry Pi to start with. Um, add MQTT and get messages going into and out of Home Assistant. And then add the Batrium data later. Uh, in case you care, I have all these blocks except for one running in Docker containers on an old Linux box that is basically idle most of the time. So that's the Batrium BMS and how I plan to incorporate it into my system. Now I will go into some detail as I actually wire it up, but I still have work to do. I did get pack number five assembled and tested, uh, so only two more to go. Oh, and I also went into the carburetor on the generator. Uh, if you remember in my original test, uh, the generator ran for almost four hours and then after that it wouldn't run for any more than about 30 seconds. Um, I checked the fuel filter, uh, everything, I mean the, the thing is basically brand new so I was kind of didn't really know why it wasn't working. I checked the spark plug, I actually replaced the spark plug, it really wasn't fouled but um, and then I went into the carburetor to kind of look in there. It looked brand new. So I really don't know what's wrong with it. Um, it did run today for 10 minutes, so I need to do some more testing on that. I hope you found some of this information useful. As always, if you have any questions, leave them below. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Now I shot an email. I got six of these and so they I got five of these when I started relaxing a little bit and then BAM!